food trends in Mexico um, are developing and and uh, one of the most important ones these days is the fact that uh, a lot of uh, importers and distributors driven by consumers is a healthy products. Uh, people are looking for health and natural, uh, especially because the Mexican market is uh, suffering. Uh, the fact that we are right now the largest obese population for adult and uh, children uh, population. Uh, so um, people are looking for reductions in fat, uh, reductions in sodium, and a lot of the manufacturers and, and even the importers and distributors are trying to bring you know products that, that have such uh, characteristics. Um, other uh, trends that are taking place in the retail segment are that um, uh, a lot of uh, fruits and nuts are, are being used and actually you know Mexico holds the second uh, largest uh, export uh, partner from the United States place um, and um, the proof is that uh, in 2012 uh, there were several categories including you know fruits vegetables cereals snacks um, healthy items uh, meats uh, dairy uh, that were imported into Mexico and, and they held uh, export records uh, since 1970 numbers so the you know that shows that the Mexican market has great opportunity and will continue to have a great opportunity you know our, our population is growing it's becoming more urban and um, uh, you know people are you know gaining terrain within their uh, disposable income you know the the middle class is growing and you know that gives the opportunity for uh, all of these uh, uh, US food products to to be more competitive in the market uh, especially because uh, it, the distribution of food products is also evolving and it's going you know from the traditional older distribution uh, structure like the farmers markets and the central markets to, to the retail segment uh, the retail segment uh, is projected to hold probably more than 50% of the distribution maybe by 2018. So um, there's great opportunities and, and these are pretty much the latest trends. The most happening trade shows in Mexico in the latest years um, are uh, the following. The National Retailers Association show, which is the ANTA show, uh, which takes place in the city of Guadalajara uh, every uh, March. And, and this is uh, the largest show for food. It is only retail oriented. However, all of the manufacturers and importers, distributors, buyers go to that show. So it is a very important show. It's a, it's a three day show and it's uh, very recommendable for any company that is interested in, in selling in, in that segment, the retail, including the club stores. Um, another very good option is the Abbas Tour show, which is the most important uh, food service show, uh, which takes place in Mexico City uh, between the months of September and October. Sometimes, you know, it, it is in one month or the other. It is also a three day show. Uh, Last year it was endorsed by FAS as, as well as the Anta show that I just described. Um, and it is focused for the food service segment. Uh, it takes place in Mexico City and um, it, it is a show where a lot of people coming from different states will, will show up to you know look at the different trends and, and the different things that are going on within that segment. There's pavilions from different countries. Uh, there's also equipment, which is not pretty much our, our uh, line, but that attracts uh, a lot of the players. Then we have um, Alimentaria, which is another show uh, on the retail side. That is a show that takes place also during the fall. I don't remember specifically the date, but um, it is a show that has a profile of uh, gourmet products. So I, I usually compare it with the fancy food show. You know, there's a lot of uh, preserves and, and wines and um, high-end products. And, and, and I think that would be suitable for, for companies that are looking, you know, to try to sell high-end products. Uh, we have the Confit Expo show, which takes place in the city of Guadalajara every 
end of July. It's a four-day show. It is for the snack and confectionery segment. It's a little bit different from the rest of the shows because in this show you can do actual sales. So you will see a lot of uh, salespeople from the different manufacturers taking orders from the uh, smaller distributors or candy stores. But this would be the show to uh, present at some point to some of the distributors and importers of candies in, in Mexico, you know, items or snack products or, or candies from the United States. Um, those pretty much would be the, the, the shows that I believe that are uh, uh, processed food oriented, uh, important at, at this moment. Food products to Mexico uh, do require labeling if these will be sold at the retail uh, level and that will, that will include the club store. So basically the definition is that any product that is uh, exhibited on a shelf will require to meet these regulations which is known as NUM 51, it's the Mexican official norm. This regulation has the purpose to provide the information of the product in Spanish to the consumer because not all of the uh, consumers of course speak English and that's the main reason of it. It's very similar to the one in the United States. Uh, bulk products and food service items do not need to comply with the regulation but uh, only the retail. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take this uh, bag as a sample just to show you really quick you know what are the things that, that need to be uh, uh, taken into consideration. Basically, to begin with, this will be considered as the main exhibit panel, and the main exhibit panel will have three basic information. That will be the generic description in Spanish, the brand, and the net content legend, which is uh, this information, and which needs to be presented in, in, in metric. Um, also, uh, as part of the of the labeling requirements, uh, you need to present the ingredient list uh, in Spanish, which is somewhere around here. Uh, in this case, you know we're we're presenting uh, chips, so you know the the ingredient list is not that big. Also, the expiration date and lot number have a, a specific uh, uh, phrase that needs to be placed. You know where you're instructing the consumer to look at the at the bag or at the cap of, of a bottle for the information. Um, there is a specific way of presenting the, the expiration date and the, and the lot number. The nutrition fact used to be uh, uh, something or an information that would be only voluntarily but now it's, it's uh, mandatory and what you gotta inform the consumer here is the caloric content content in kilojoules uh, but also in calories which uh, we, we don't think it's very functional but that's how the, the requirement uh, asks for it. The fat content, the proteins, uh, the fiber and the sodium, those would be the, the main uh, nutrients uh, that need to be presented. Any vitamin or mineral that is under 5% cannot be uh, stated in the nutrition fact. Um, also, uh, there are um, legends that are forbidden. Uh, if you cannot prove that the legend or what you're saying in the legend, you know you will you won't be able to uh, place it because you're going to be uh, confusing the consumer. There is also uh, an important thing, uh, which is the fact that you're able to get a certificate of compliance through an agency that is appointed by the Mexican government and um, basically that, that will help you to have a good sleep because you know mistakes are very uh, serious and expensive you know you can have your loads uh, uh, be held at the border and sometimes even the packaging not being good if, if, if your uh, work done in the translation and in the adjustments in the label is not in good shape so it is recommendable to, to get that certificate so just in a nutshell, this is the labeling regulation. Providing the right documentation will be key to have a successful border crossing of their products. Uh, importers are mainly responsible for part of that border crossing uh, by working in coordination with the customs broker. The customs broker is the uh, license agent by the Mexican government to do 
all of the uh, importation of the product into Mexico uh, by doing it by doing it with the correct paperwork um, and to end up uh, with a document that is called pedimento aduanal. The pedimento aduanal is basically the the legal document uh, expedited by the Mexican customs that will uh, cover the uh, legal entry of the merchandise into the country. Uh, the process is complicated but the way it takes place is easy because most of the work is going to be done by the importer and the custom broker. The only job for the US company will be to provide all of the co documentation that has been required by the uh, Mexican importer. Um, the very first step is for the importer to pro to ask you for the ingredient list of the product that you want to export. And the reason that he's asking for this ingredient list is because the custom broker is going to analyze the content of the ingredients and it's going to determine which HS harmonized code it will fit into. So depending on the HS code will be the number of requirements that are going to be needed and that will include the possibility of phytosanitary certificates or microbiological certificates or physical and chemical uh, certificates that that considering only the the US side on the other hand uh, the importer might have also some responsibility to look at some permits from the Mexican government or some specific process that needs to to comply with for example the physical inspection of the product to get the product uh, across the border so all of those uh, requirements uh, put together will allow the custom broker to get the product into the market. So it is very important um, that uh, you make sure that you provide every single document that is being requested by the importer so you don't run into problems by the time that you have your cargo at the border and find out that you're missing one document because that document is, is going to cost high dollars you will have to pay for delay, you will have to pay you know, for storage, and, and that's something that uh, is not going to help you. So uh, the best recommendation is uh, being constant communication with your uh, importer and, and try to uh, supply all of the information that he requires from the custom broker. U.S. companies that are interested in the Mexican market uh, need to know a little bit about the culture um, doing uh, some research. I think it is important to know, you know, who you're going to be selling your products to. That, that would be, you know, the, the first part that we would recommend. The second part is, you know, to do your homework. You, you need to know um, if your product will fit into the market. And in order to do that, it will be necessary for you to try to do some research. There are excellent resources that are sometimes not uh, paid uh, that can help you uh, have an idea if your product will have the feasibility to, to enter to the market. Um, one of those uh, is the internet. Through the internet, you know you can access um, information from the from the food uh, industry or from the government to to get to know some import or export statistics. Uh, also, um, you can get into the supermarket uh, websites and uh, request information on specific products. Sometimes they have uh, products that are sold online. So, you know, the fact that you're able to see a picture of a product and also get to know the price can give you sort of an idea. But one of the key things uh, overall is uh, market research. Also, another uh, important thing is that you learn the import and export process of uh, uh, your uh, specific uh, food product. And, and this will be, um, you know, through uh, uh, advancing some of your efforts by trying to contact uh, a forwarder or a customs broker to try to learn the, the procedures. Um, another important thing that we recommend is that uh, you have the possibility to adjust the formulations of your products. You know, sometimes the taste um, uh, of the local consumers is a little bit different. Uh, you would be surprised sometimes that 
you know, there are specific flavors that are uh, very popular in, in markets abroad and, and might not be popular domestically. So uh, a hint for you is that a lot of uh, uh, products that have chile or that are hot, you know, sometimes are popular within, within our segment. And of course, not all of the products can be adjusted to be hot or, or uh, spiced, but, um, you know, just as an example, the snack segment is, is a good example of it. Um, promotion is also very recommendable. Um, it is it is good for you to consider that the Mexican market has or is very competitive and there's many players trying to get into the market so promotion is definitely a must. Visiting the market is also a very important part of the entire process for you while trying to get into the market. Um, there's not going to be a better judge than you, you know, coming and looking at the different uh, possibilities, uh, you know, looking at the different retailers, meeting with the buyers, with the importers, you know, the, the way that the product is presented in the shelves, the way that the product is demonstrated, um, and, and I think, you know, that is a key for, uh, you know, companies that are wanting to enter into the market.